Greetings and welcome to this helpful training on fire alarm systems. This training course will help with several FDNY certificates of fitness. The S95 and F53 are just some that you'll find this information very helpful. To obtain the certificate of fitness you will need to go down to the fire department headquarters located at 9 Metro Tech in Brooklyn. This area is easily accessible by the A, C, and F trains to J Street or the R train to J Street Metro Tech. When you go to the fire department, you must bring a letter from your employer. Tests are conducted Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., except on legal holidays. To obtain a passing score, you must get at least 70% in order to pass. You can always get more information directly from the fire department website. We're going to talk a little bit about the different certificates of fitness that you will see in the study material. The first one being the F01. The F01 is Fire Guard for Impairments. What is an impairment? Anytime the fire protection system is out of service. This includes sprinklers, standpipes, and the fire alarm system. The S12. This is for the citywide sprinkler system. The S13. The S13 is for the citywide standpipe systems, whether it is a wet or dry standpipe system. Let's get into some very important definitions that you will need to know. Sprinkler system. A fire extinguishing system, other than a mist fire extinguishing system, that utilizes water as an extinguishing agent. Standpipe system. Piping installed in a building or structure that serves to transfer water from a water supply to a hose connection at one or more locations in a building or structure used for firefighting purposes. Once again, sprinkler system is the S12. Standpipe system, S13. ARCS, A R C S, which stands for Auxiliary Radio Communication Systems. Central Station is a facility that receives alarm signals and relays them to the fire department. Initiating device, a system component that transmits signals such as supervisories, smoke detectors, pull stations, etc. Nuisance alarm, you can receive these due to lack of proper maintenance, improper installation, or mechanical failures. Fire guard. A person who holds a certificate of fitness place of assembly safety personnel. Very similar to fire guard. Fire guards for impairment are FO1. Fire guards for place of assembly are FO3 or FO4. And they're used to manage occupants. Building occupants. All persons in the building, including employees, building staff, and visitors. Fire extinguishing systems. These can be automatic systems to extinguish fires. Out of service system is when a fire protection system 
that is not fully functional or whose operation is impaired. If you have an impairment, you must have a fire guard for impairments with an FO1. Some of the most important things that you will need to know for your computer based exams. How to make a public address announcement throughout the building. This is also known as an all call. How to place the building offline and back online. Each system is unique in its own way, but they will have very similar functions. Some of the reasons you would go offline would be for inspections, testing and maintenance, fire drills, or planned out of service systems. You would not want to have a false alarm. But if your building is offline, you must ensure that you call 911 when there's an emergency. Acknowledging these signals at the fire command station or the fire alarm control panel. You must also know how to manually activate the alarm tones for fire emergencies. And you must also know how to manually activate the tones for non-fire emergencies. This would include severe weather, civil disturbance or riots, bomb threats, active shooter scenarios, or chemical, biological, or radiological incidents. You must also know how to perform fail-safe door release functions. Some buildings have a fail-safe and fail-secure system. You must also know how to silence the fire tones throughout the building when received. And you must know how to reset the fire alarm control panel. You cannot reset this panel until told to do so by the fire department. The primary purpose of this system is to transmit signals to an FDNY approved central station. The fire department shall be notified whenever a standpipe, sprinkler, or fire alarm system is out of service for whatever reason. If it's a planned or unplanned condition, you must make these notifications. The three types of signals initiated by the fire alarm control panel will be fire alarm signal, supervisory signals, and trouble signals. Once again, the three signals are fire alarm signals, supervisory signals, and trouble signals. Whenever you receive a fire alarm signal, the FDNY is dispatched via of a central station as long as your building is online. For supervisory and trouble signals, the FDNY is not dispatched and someone needs to investigate these conditions. A trouble alarm can come from what you see on the picture on the left. Maybe someone accidentally or intentionally cut some wires. On the right, a supervisory where someone is tampering with a line. For a fire alarm signal, you could have a water flow switch that is activated. In case of an alarm, there are three important buttons that you must know. Acknowledge, silence, and reset. Do not silence the building's audible visual system. You must make sure that you investigate it. The system cannot be reset until to do so by the fire department. Three emergency action steps to take in an emergency are sheltering in place, basically meaning stay where you are, in building relocation, taking a set of people and moving them to a safe area, typically to the center or core of the building, partial evacuation, 
moving some of the occupants from floor to floor. And last, full building evacuation. These systems have a primary power source, which is typically from the city, and a secondary power source, usually through a generator or battery backup. Once again, these systems also need to be inspected, tested, and maintained. You will need to know the different classes of fire, class A, B, C, D, and K. An easy way to remember this is breaking down the words and letters. Class A, trash. Trash has the letter A. Class B, flammable liquids. Flammable has the letter B. C, electrical. Electrical has the letter C. Combustible metals is class D. And class K, kitchen fires. Your classes of fires once again are class A, B, C, D, and K. Portable fire extinguishers must be inspected on a monthly basis, meaning someone must go to the extinguishers every month take a look at the pin, the gauge, the hose, and the nozzle, and put their initials on the monthly inspection tag. Portable fire extinguishers are serviced annually by a licensed contractor who holds a W96 with the New York City Fire Department. Smoke detectors are also part of your fire alarm system. There are many different types you must become familiar with the ones in your building. There are also heat detectors. The two different types are rate of rise and fixed temperature heat detector. Rate of rise heat detectors basically go off when the temperature slowly rises to a set point. Fixed temperatures go off at a designated set point when it gets too hot. Manual pull stations are also part of the fire protection system. The manual pull stations may not directly transmit a signal to the fire department. There are two different types, single action and double action, and the name says it all. Single action requires one step to activate, double action requires two steps to activate. The audible and visual devices that will go off in the event of a fire alarm are speakers, speaker strobes, horns, gongs, and bells. Typically in the event of a fire alarm, you will get notification on the fire floor, the floor above, and the floor below. Some buildings also have a remote annunciator panel We'll also talk about the communication systems. In the event of an alarm, it is your responsibility to communicate. One-way communication and two-way communication systems. One-way would be the PA system. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Is your fire safety director speaking? We have received a signal on the fourth floor north mechanical room. Will wardens please investigate and get back to me? One-way communication systems are used to give information, give direction. Two-way communication systems are typically warden phones on each floor and in certain areas those individuals designated to do so can give you information at the panel which then in turn will allow you to use your one-way communication system you have to be able to get information that is accurate and give information to the occupants of the building
you can acknowledge, you can silence, but you cannot reset the system. The only time you can reset the system is when the fire department says it's authorized. It's important to know your building system as there are many different vendors and types of class E fire alarm systems. But the typical buttons you will deal with are acknowledge, silence, and reset. Once again, my name is Charles McNamara. I hope you found this information helpful and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Have a great day. Good luck on your exam.